Hey class, this evening we're going to be looking at Lesson 6.8, Patterns with Fractions. So let's begin by looking at our essential question. How can you use addition or subtraction to describe a pattern or create a sequence with fractions? Well, let's begin by looking at a word problem. Mr. Patrick wants to develop a new chili recipe for his restaurant. Each batch he makes uses a different amount of chili powder. The first batch uses three and one-half ounces. The second batch uses four and five-six ounces. The third uses six and one-six ounces. And the fourth uses seven and one-half ounces. If this pattern continues, how much chili powder will he use in the sixth batch? So you can find the pattern in a sequence by comparing one term with the next term. So let's begin with step one. It says to write the terms in the sequence as equivalent fractions with a common denominator. Then examine the sequence and compare the consecutive terms to find the rule used to make the sequence of fractions. So we begin with our three and a half fraction, our four and five sixths, our six and one sixth, and our seven and one half. And in order to do that, we're going to have to create equivalent fractions with each one of those. So let's begin with our what we can use as our common denominator. So in order to do that, we see that we have a denominator of 2, a denominator of 6, a denominator of 6, and a denominator of 2. And we know that we can use a denominator of 6 for each of those terms because 6 is a multiple of 2 and a multiple of 6. So let's begin with 6. And we know that 2 times 3 equals 6. And whatever we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. So 1 times 3 equals 3. And that would be 3 and 3 6. Uh, we don't have to change our next fraction because it already has a denominator of 6. So we can make the 5 6 and bring our whole number over as 4 and 5 6. Again, we already have a denominator of 6 with our fraction 6 and 1 6. So we can just bring our 1 over as the numerator and bring our whole number over as the same. And then we know that in order to get 6, we have to multiply 2 times 3. Whatever we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. So 1 times 3 is 3, and our whole number is 7. So we found our common denominators. Then if we go back, it says to examine the sequence and compare the consecutive terms to find the rule used to make the sequence of fractions. Well, we see that between 3 and 3, 6 and 4 and 5, 6, we have added 1 and 2, 6. Well, if we take 4 and 5, 6, and we will try the rule and add 1 and and 2 6, it does give us 6 and 1 6. So we do see a pattern of adding 1 and 2 6 to each of our consecutive terms. Now it says to step 2, write a rule that describes the pattern in the sequence. Is the sequence increasing or decreasing from one term to the next? explain. Well, we see that the terms are increasing by 1 and 2 6 or 1 and 1 3rd. So therefore the rule would be to add 1 and 2 6. Now let's look at step 3. It says to extend the sequence to solve the problem. So we have 3 and 1 half, 4 and 5 6, 6 and 1 6, 7 and 1 half. So what would our next two terms be? Well, if we take 7 and 1 half and we add 1 and 2 6 to it, that would give us 8 and 5 6. And if we take our 8 and 5, 6, and add 1 and 2, 6 to it, that's going to give us 10 and 1, 6. So 
Mr. Patrick will use 10 and 1 6 ounces of chili powder in the six batch. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there would be his answer. Now, let's look at another example. It says to find the unknown term in the sequence. So we have 1 and 3 fourths, 1 and 9 sixteenths, 1 and 3 eighths, 1 and 3 sixteenths. So we need to find what our next three would be before ending with 7 sixteenths and 1 fourth. So let's start with step one. It says to write the terms in the sequence as equivalent fractions with a common denominator. Well, we see that we have 4, 16, and 8 as our denominators. So we know that the one multiple that all of those have in common would be 16. So we can write it with a denominator of 16 for each one of our fractions. So now you see that we have created equivalent fractions for all of our fractions at the top. So the next step is to write a rule describing the pattern in the sequence. What operation can be used to describe a sequence that increases? Well, if a sequence increases, we are using addition. Then it says, what operation can be used to describe a sequence that decreases? Well, if we're using addition for a sequence that increases, we should know that we would use subtraction for a sequence that decreases. So, therefore, our rule for this particular one, if we're looking, is that since we see that our fractions or our terms, which is what we call numbers in a sequence, our terms, we see that our terms are decreasing. And if we look really close, we see that it's decreasing from 12 to 9. That would be 3 sixteenths. From 9 to 6 would be 3 sixteenths. From 6 to 3 would be 3 sixteenths. So therefore, our rule would be to subtract, because I'm seeing a pattern, 3 sixteenths. So then step 3 says use your rule to find the unknown terms then complete the sequence above. So therefore if I take 3 sixteenths from 1 and 3 sixteenths that is simply going to leave me with 1. If I take 3 sixteenths from 1, 1 being equivalent to 16 sixteenths, and if I take 3 sixteenths from that, that's going to give me 13 sixteenths. And if I take 3 sixteenths from that, that is going to give me with 10 sixteenths. Now, let's look on down at the try this section. It says to write a rule for the sequence, then find the unknown term. We have 1 and 1 twelfth. We have 5 sixths. We have the unknown term, we have one-third, and we have one-twelfth. So if we look at those, the first thing we need to do is to find equivalent fractions. And we know that we could use the common denominator of 12 to find our equivalent fractions. So let's do that. So we have, we don't need to change our first fraction, so that can stay the same. We know that we multiply 6 times 2 to get 12, so we need to do the same with the numerator. 5 times 2 equals 10. Um, then we have the other fraction of 1 third. We know that we multiply 3 times 4 to get 12, so we need to do the same with the numerator. 1 times 4. And then our last fraction stays the same. So here is where we need to find our unknown. So now if we look at these, we see that 1 and 1 twelfth, then we have 10 twelfths, 4 twelfths. So let's kind of look at what the difference is between 1 and 1 twelfth and 10 twelfths. And it's kind of hard to see, so we can get rid of this whole number 
add a whole number to 1 twelfths, which would give us 13 twelfths, and then we see a difference of 3. So minus 3 twelfths. And then we see a minus 3 twelfths between those two fractions. So if we do the same thing, 10 twelfths minus 3 twelfths, that's going to give us 7 twelfths as our variable, or as our term. So our rule would be to subtract 3 twelfths. Now it says to write the first four terms of the sequence. It says to start at 1 fourth, so we already know that our first term is going to be 1 fourth, and then it says to add 3 eighths. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to convert our 1 fourth to a equivalent fraction with a denominator of 8. So we know that we multiply 4 times 2 to get to 8, 1 times 2 would be 2 eighths. So now we have 2 eighths and we are going to add 3 eighths. So our next fraction would be 5 eighths. And if we add 3 eighths to that, that's going to give us 8 eighths, which is also equal to 1. And if we add 3 eighths to 1, that's going to give us 1 and 3 eighths. Now let's take a look at tonight's password. Uh, it says, Jacob has $15 in his bank at home. He decides to save for a new skateboard. After one week, he has $23 in his bank. After two weeks, he has $31. After three weeks, he has $39. If this pattern continues, how much money will Jacob have saved after six weeks? Is it $47? $55, $63, or $71. So be sure to work this one out, write, record it in your journal, and bring it with you to class tomorrow. I will see you then.